Two weeks ago, several imams of the Islamic Leadership Council of Metropolitan New York joined an equal number of Muslim community service providers and activists in a boycott of Mayor Bloomberg's end of the year annual interfaith breakfast. We stated then that we could not, in all good conscience, ignore the fact that our faith community is in the midst of a civil liberties crisis. We believe that the disclosures this past summer by the Associated Press of warrantless wholesale surveillance of the New York Muslim community by agents of the NYPD under the command of Commissioner Raymond Kelly should be a concern for all New Yorkers. The police commissioner, backed by the mayor and local tabloids, such as the New York Daily News, have been smugly dismissive of various issues raised by us and others. As was just mentioned, there was the NYPD report on so-called homegrown terrorism about four years ago. We raised our concerns, they were smugly dismissed. We raised concerns about the warrantless wholesale surveillance of the Muslim community. Those concerns were smugly dismissed. We raised our concerns about the use of this bigoted, Islamophobic film, The Third Jihad, and those concerns too were smugly dismissed. Those of us who reside in the inner cities of New York have raised our concerns for years about the abuse of NYPD stop and frisk policies, and those concerns have been smugly dismissed. Last weekend began a process wherein we now see irrefutable evidence of the validity of Muslim community concerns. Last weekend, the AP revealed that the CIA's top lawyer never approved sending a veteran agency officer to work with the NYPD in establishing spying programs directed towards Muslim American citizens. Thus, 38 years after the New York Times broke the news of CIA, uh, CIA surveillance of Americans who were, at least in their eyes, guilty until proven innocent, we, the people, find ourselves facing the specter of a 21st century COINTELPRO, once again in the name of safety and security. Then, just a few days ago, of course, we saw the revelations about the use of the film. Last July, before the AP story broke, the NYPD held its annual pre-Ramadan briefing of local imams. There were uh, uh, well over 100 imams at that briefing, and several of those present expressed their appreciation and their concern for the job that Commissioner Kelly has been doing. However, speaking on behalf of those of us who have a, a different view, I directly raised the question to Commissioner Kelly, asking him to clarify the use of the film, The Third Jihad. He said that the NYPD had not used that film as a training uh, tool or training device. He stated that the film was simply playing in the background prior to the beginning of a training session. It is now clear that either someone intentionally deceived Commissioner Kelly or Commissioner Kelly intentionally deceived us. We of the Muslim community respect those who respect us. And if the police commissioner had chosen to respect us and to engage bona fide Muslim leaders in this city, who might differ with him and, and uh, engage us in the spirit of community policing instead of deceiving us and mistrusting us, 
this entire matter might have turned out differently. It's clear to us that the same mindset that can justify the use of a film like the Third Jihad for counterterrorism training, much less appearing in the film, is the same mindset that justifies the use of warrantless wholesale spying on the Muslim community. And therefore, the Islamic Leadership Council of Metropolitan New York supports the call of the Muslim American Civil Liberties Coalition for resignations or dismissals and a city council investigation and instituting of an effective and meaningful community control and oversight mechanism and the retraining of police officers whose minds have been poisoned by that film and others like it. But additionally, we as imams, as religious leaders of some of the oldest Muslim congregations in the city, we additionally intend to call upon State Attorney General Eric T. Schneiderman and if necessary, Federal Attorney General Eric H. Holder Jr. to investigate the showing of that bigoted film by NYPD personnel as well as the systematic violation of the civil and human rights of Muslim American citizens. We share the concern of every New Yorker for safety and security for us all. Terrorism is an evil that must be eliminated, but one cannot fight wrong with wrong. One must fight wrong with right. We all want to be safe, but we contend that you New Yorkers must not tolerate violation of civil liberties and profiling of communities based upon race, ethnicity, religion, or politics. Muslims, like every other American, are innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. And it's our intention, uh, probably in two weeks, on Friday, February the 3rd, to continue our struggle for justice by asserting our constitutional rights to freedom of worship, freedom of assembly, etc., by once again, and freedom of worship, by once again uh, holding an outdoor massive prayer service just north of here to be followed by a rally and a march on one police plaza. As we get closer to that date, we'll release those details to you. Thank you. Um, he's in the new press release that, that was being given out, and if anybody didn't get it, we'll pass that on to you. Um, Imam Al-Hajj Talib Abdul Rashid, Islamic Leadership Council of Metropolitan New York.